night tour with diamond welcome to the world's most popular maths problem on the chessboard the night tour is by far the most beloved topic of those mathematicians artists and computer scientists who venture onto the chessboard for some recreational problem solving time first here is the definition of the night tour Starting on a square of your choice, traverse every square of the chessboard once and only once. If the knight's landing square is a knight move away from its starting square, then it's called a closed tour. Otherwise, the tour is open. We now think that there are about 19 quadrillion distinct open knight tours. This is roughly 100,000 times more than the estimated number of galaxies in the universe. While there are many open tours on the chessboard, the number of closed tours is also substantial. There are exactly 13 trillion, 267 billion, 364 million, 410,000 and 532 closed tours altogether if direction is disregarded. A closed tour is a loop, so disregarding direction makes sense. The Knight's Tour has been the pet project of many inquisitive minds throughout history, starting with a closed tour by Al Adli Al Rumi from around 840. Al Adli Al Rumi lived in Baghdad and is known to have written a book on Shatran, which is the old form of chess played in the Neo-Persian Empire at the time. He was also an avid Shatran player himself. The diagram shows the closed knight's tour made by Al-Adli Al-Rumi. Abraham de Moivre was a French mathematician, best known for his famous formula that gives trigonometric representation to complex numbers. This is his recommended way of approaching the knight's tour. First divide the chessboard into an inner 4x4 four four square and the remaining border area. Start in the outer border. The knight must move around in one direction to fill the outer border as much as possible. When the outer border is filled up, you can traverse through the inner square with a little ingenuity. Leonard Euler was the most prolific mathematician from the 18th century. He also explored the problem related to chess. He presented the first comprehensive mathematical analysis of the Knight's Tour. He wrote his article in 1758. In 1823, Warnsdorf proposed the following simple rule. At each step, select the next swoop that connects with the minimum number of further moves. This rule has proved incredibly effective in finding solutions for open night tours. It was only in the 1980s that a few carefully constructed examples showed that the rule can fail if the wrong move is made in the case of some ties. The method proved equally successful on larger boards. There are six distinct quadrilaterals that can be drawn on the chessboard whose vertices are traversable in four successive night jumps. Two of them are congruent squares and the other are two pairs of congruent rhombuses. These are all drawn on the diagram. Four of these shapes can be drawn in a single quarter of the chessboard. We will use these four quadrilaterals, the black and the yellow squares and the green and the blue rhombuses, to construct the knight's tour. We will cover the entire chessboard with these shapes using colored counters, and with a touch of imagination, they might turn into diamonds. First, we divide the chessboard into four quadrants, and then we place the black diamond in all four quadrants as shown in the diagram.
The yellow diamonds are next. Note that every quadrant is filled with diamonds in the same way. We continue building up the pattern with the blue diamonds. The remaining gaps are filled with the green diamonds. We are now ready to invite the knight to the arena. Let's begin the knight's two, let's say from c3. We could have picked any other square. The diamond method works equally well from any starting square. There is a blue counter on c3, so blue diamonds will be collected first from the board. There are four blue diamonds, one in each quadrant. Gather them one by one, moving from quadrant to quadrant. Avoid getting stuck in corners and around the edges. For example, the last three counters were collected by the moves knight to a8, b6, d5. It would have been a mistake to try the other way around by knight d5, b6 to a8, as the knight would not have been able to leave the a8 corner. The last blue counter was collected on d5. Now the knight is ready to move on to the next color. Either yellow or black are the knight move away from d5. The knight chose the black color. Four black diamonds are gathered next. Once a quadrant is cleared of its black diamond, it is again important to find a way to jump to the next black diamond. The last black counter was on D7. The only counter available from here is the green one on E5. The knight clears the board from the green diamonds. There are several routes the knight can take, but care must be taken with the onward journey not to leave any green counters behind. Only one color to go. With the yellow diamonds gone, the knight's tour is complete. It's important not to go astray in the final steps. If you happen to go the wrong way, as in the diagram, set up the diamonds of the given color again and restart from C6. It's a good idea to mark the square where the knight collected the last counter of the previous color. Here, the last green counter was on C6. Mission complete. Note that this knight stool was open. The starting square C3 differed from the landing square F5. I will leave you with a question. The starting square C3 is a dark square, while the landing square F5 is a light square. Can you figure out why all knight tours on an 8x8 board that begin on a dark square must always end on a light square?